Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a complex expression. We have cosine z plus i sine z divided by sine z minus i cosine z. I hope I haven't made this problem because that looks somewhat familiar. Anyways, if I did, I apologize. But anyways, let's see how we can proceed with the solution. I'll be presenting at least two methods, I guess. Let's get started. Now, for my first method, I'm going to use what is pretty much common with these kinds of problems. I do see something like a plus bi and b minus ai. I guess I could do that substitution. Maybe that would, things, uh, that would make things a little easier. Like if I call this a and if I call this b, right? Then this would be b and this would be a. So my expression would look like a plus bi divided by b minus ai. Let's go ahead and work with that. And again, I'm not going to make any assumptions or shortcuts. I'm not taking any shortcuts with my first method because the first method is called no pain, no gain. Okay. So uh, if you're not up to these kinds of challenges, uh, you can go ahead and skip and go to the next one. But I'd like you to see the first method, even though it's painful. I want your input. Like which method do you like better? Okay, great. So we're going to distribute in the numerator, obviously, AB plus A squared I plus b squared i plus a b i squared a i squared is negative one so that's just going to be minus a b all of that is divided by these two are conjugates so their product is p squared i mean b squared i don't know where p comes from b squared plus a squared awesome notice that a b cancels out uh oh and then we get the following we can take out an i a squared plus b squared divided by b squared plus a squared. Actually, I was hoping that the first method would be a little painful, but it wasn't. Maybe we should work with sines and cosines. Maybe that'll be a little bit more painful. Anyways, you get the idea. a squared plus b squared cancels out, leaving us with i. Are you serious? Is that the answer? Let's go ahead and take a look at another approach and see if we can get the same answer a little in a little harder way. Okay. Now you could definitely directly go with uh, the conjugate of this expression and you would arrive at the same thing. But this time I'm going to do things a little differently and use the polar forms. How can I use the polar forms for this kind of expression? I can go ahead and kind of try to write this using Euler's formula. What is Euler's formula? Cosine theta plus I sine theta is equal to E to the I theta. Of course, we don't have a modulus here, which means it's one. Don't worry about it. But it can be written in a very brief format, which is this one. But the problem here is sine and cosine are switched around, and that makes things harder, right? But here's what we can do. Think about how we can change the name of sine and cosine, sine to cosine and cosine to sine. That will be with the additional subtraction of pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, because we kind of need to change the orientation a little bit like rotate by like 90 degrees or something. And then uh, this is going to be a minus sign. So here's what we can do. In two steps, I can take sine z minus i cosine z, first of all, and write this as, um, for, first of all, I can put a minus sign here and kind of write like this, a minus sign on the outside and then minus sine z plus i cosine z. And now you know that cosine is even. So we can write this as negative of sine negative z. And this is going to be the cosine of negative z because cosine of negative z is the same as cosine of z. Good. So we were able to kind of change it into a single angle at least with a plus sign. And now what we need to do is change the sine and cosine. And to switch that, we kind of need to think about it this way. Uh, sine of alpha can be written as cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha and vice versa. So sine of negative z is basically cosine of pi over 2 minus negative z, that will be pi over 2 plus z, by the way, not alpha, plus z. And the same thing goes for that. Cosine of negative z would be sine of pi over 2 minus negative z or pi over 2 plus z. Yes, that does the trick, but we still have a minus sign in the front, and I have cosine z plus sine z in the numerator. But don't worry too much about it, because what we have now is 
actually going to do the trick because just ignore the minus sign. We can divide these. How do you divide two numbers in polar form? Easy. You can first of all write these as e to the iz and then divide it by negative. Let's put the negative sign here. e to the power i times pi over 2 plus c. You get the idea? This is theta. This is my new theta. Great. Now when you divide these, of course, you're supposed to subtract the exponents e to the power with a negative sign i times. Now if you subtract z minus pi over 2 plus z, that's going to give you minus pi over 2. So you have to be careful. That's going to give you a minus pi over 2. So we can kind of think of it this way. It's minus cosine negative pi over 2 plus i times sine negative pi over 2. But what is negative pi over 2? It's the same as 3 pi over 2, right? Think about the unit circle. It's right here. And the cosine of that is 0. So this is 0. And this is negative 1. So we get a negative i from inside with a negative sign from the outside. You get a positive i. Yes, we were able to do it in a much harder way. So the second method is now called no pain, no gain instead of the first method because first method turns out to be pretty easy. All right, let's look at the third method, even though I said I'm going to present at least two methods. Did I say at least? I don't know. I forgot. Anyways, so we now have cosine of z plus i sine of z divided by sine of z minus i cosine of z. The third method, I think, is kind of like my favorite. But again, you're going to let me know which one you like the best. All right. Ready? So far, let's recap what we did. First method, we call these A and B and just do the normal work. And it wasn't that hard. I was expecting something harder. Maybe if I didn't do the substitution, I would have to do a little. No, not really. It's not bad at all. It's pretty good. Second method, definitely longer, but it uses a lot of important trigonometric identities. Some stuff you need to know if you're studying trigonometry or pre-calculus. Of course, all of these are before calculus, right? Okay, you should know these if you're studying calculus already. Now, what do we do next? I'm going to try to, and of course, I know the answer, so that, that's kind of not, that's kind of cheating, but uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and factor out something, and that's going to be i, of course, right? But before I do that, uh, there's not no i in front of cosine z, so I'm going to put a, put a little i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so I have to put a negative i squared. Get the idea? Now, we're going to go ahead and factor out an i here. That's going to give us negative i cosine z plus sine z divided by. And the reason behind factoring out an i was because if you think about it, and this kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Now think about it. I have cosine z and I have negative i cosine z. So it would be nice if we could kind of cancel out one of the i's, right? Or factor it out. If I was able to factor it out, that would be nice. Maybe I should factor the denominator. Who knows? doesn't matter. No big deal. Notice that now the numerator and the denominator contain the same factor, right? These two are the same, leaving us with i as our answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.